Well, last week we explored um, that, that Paul was saying about the goal of life. He was saying about his goal of life, or the goal of life of Christian. What it meant to be a follower of God, that's what he was saying. And how Paul was qualified as a Jew. It was, he was qualified to say the church to say to the church of Philippi, it was not about doing or rituals, but believing and having a relationship with God, Christ, our Lord Saviour. But before I, I explore today's work, I, I just want to get the balance right between Paul, because so many people put Paul up there and say, yeah, but Paul was a man of God. Paul was this, Paul was that. Well, I want to put that balance right today. And let me say, some find Paul had to follow in life. Some find that. Why? Because I believe that most people, even Christians, do not identify well with the Apostle Paul. I viewed Paul, well, I can never reach that level of a man. And rightly so. Why? Because our aim should reach and attain the Lord Jesus. We should be looking at the Lord Jesus above that man. Yeah? However, I believe we can learn a lot from Paul. We can learn a lot from this apostle. I believe that. I, see, Paul is thought as a man who lives such a good life, and holy life at that, that he is an example. He's not considered to be a realistic one for ordinary people to follow. People think that, but that's not the case. That's not the case. It's simply not true. Paul is a wonderful example of a person looking at Jesus. Looking at Jesus. He is. Yeah? And it's realistic to believe that we can be like him. See, Paul was very pacific in telling others to follow his example, including the Corinthians, the Philippians, and the Thessalonians. And I don't believe this was a proud thing for him to say as if he was perfect, but rather that they were to follow his example, even as he followed Christ. He goes on to say, the goal must be like Jesus Christ. Is it not? See, Paul is a good example of how a mere mortal like ourselves is to do just that. And part of the problem is that we tend to look at Paul at the end of his life, and forget that it took many years, it took him many years of following after God to reach that mature level that he is. He was, and when he was writing the epistles during the last 10 years of his life, Paul learned to walk with God the same way we are to learn to walk with God. Through the truth of the Bible and application daily. And application daily. You know, I just felt we needed that balance. We need to understand that balance because otherwise we tend to switch off. We tend to say, well, Paul, yeah. Well, that was Paul and this is us, yeah? But, so back to the, the subject in hand. And my question today, my question today is this. Do you know the power of a resurrection? Do you know the power of a resurrection? That's my question. Paul says this in 3.10. He says this in, in Philippians 3.10. I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering. Becoming like him in his death. Or, as a message puts it, I give up all the inferior stuff so I can know Christ personally. Experiencing his resurrection power. Be a partner in his suffering and go all the way with him to death itself. If there was any way to get in on the resurrection from the dead, I want you to do it. That's what Paul says. So what is Paul talking about here? And how does this impact us today? How does this impact you today? Can we experience the resurrection power? Can we experience that power? Well, Paul says, I want to know Christ. Well, he knows Christ, don't he? But he is saying, he is saying this, he wants to know more. I want to know more of Christ, he is saying. You know, do you, do you want to know more of Christ? Because I certainly want to know more of Christ. You know, we can never have too much of Christ. We can never have too much of Christ. 
We're always learning. We're always learning. You know? And I want to learn more. I want to go deeper in Christ. I want to do that. Colossians 1 10 says this, and this is from the New King James Version, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him, being faithful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Paul wants what all of us want, or all of us should want, and that is saying he wants more. He wants more. See, I believe most people want more in life. Most people want more in life, don't they? They want more in life. And most people are searching. Most people search for more in life. But they are unaware. Unaware of what? That is why so many people out there are searching in the wrong places. They want to see power. They want to see the power. Well, let me tell you, there's no power like seeing somebody raised from the dead. That is a miracle, it's a miracle. Rising from the dead. But before we go further, let's backtrack to that previous verse where Paul said this. Paul emphasized we need to know more, know, need to know God. The God who gives us righteousness, not through our own merit, but through the basis of faith. Who is merit. Spurgeon once said this, I want you to observe at the very outset that all Paul desired to know was always in connection with our Lord himself. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Jesus first and then the power of his resurrection. See, you cannot know the powers of resurrection without having a relationship with Jesus, without knowing Jesus. You can't know that power until you know Jesus. Until you know Jesus. And to know Jesus is having that relationship with him. Is having that relationship with him. John 10, 9 says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved. Means women of well mind. The power of Jesus' resurrection is the greatest display of power possible. It conquers death. Jesus should he add the absolute power in both physically and spiritual realms. What power? What power that is to conquer death. That is power, isn't it? That is power. Power to conquer death. Resurrection power. The power of Jesus is the greatest display of power possible in conquering death. Jesus should be at absolute power. So how does this power affect us? How does this power affect us? When Paul personally identified with this is revealed both in Romans 6 and Galatians 2.20. In which Paul says this. Paul says this. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and delivered himself up for me. For me. He delivered himself up for us. He died on that cross for us. For me. For you. Paul was experiencing the power of Jesus, resurrection as he daily lived by faith in the Son of God instead of his own flesh. This was Christ living in and through him. That is the same way each of us who are Christians, Christians are privileged to live if we allow it to, if we allow that spirit to. Let me explain this. I want to explain this today. This is very important. This verse is one of the greatest verses you know, in, in the Bible. It's one of the greatest verses. Many want to see power and yet don't understand the same power that Jesus had. It's that of the resurrection power. And that lives in us, the Christian, God's follower today. It lives in us. See, too often... We live by our own flesh, by our wisdom, 
Instead, they be cut off our ability to live in the power of God. We cut off that power so often by, by, by taking control, by wanting to live, to make that, to live in that own flesh. Too often we let our minds be occupied by the things, the things below instead of the things above. We look at the things below and we let our minds be occupied that rather than the things above. And instead of trusting the Lord, we lean on our own understandings. We do that, don't we? Very often we do that. We pray for things such as boldness and, as you said earlier, healing. We pray for those things. But the truth is, we have the boldness in the name of Jesus. We have that boldness. We drink from the same well as Jesus did. We drink the same water that Jesus did. We have that power, that resurrection power. I get tingly when I think of it. That's the spirit moving. Yeah? Spirit moving. You know, a spiritual note this. I'm not going to quote spiritual all the way, but I, I think this is so, you know, grab me. I do not think, however, that Paul is here thinking so much of the power displayed in the resurrection as a power of which comes out of it. He's thinking of the power that's coming out of that resurrection. What Jesus done, he released power. He released power by the resurrection. It's powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. The power, and it, which it may mostly be properly and called the power of the resurrection. Of his resurrection, you hear that? Correct that. His resurrection. What do we mean the power? The resurrection power in us? Believers in Christ. Notice. Notice this. And I put it bold here, so I need to make impact on this. I put it bold. He has the power of the resurrection. Paul does not ask God for more power. Instead, he asks God that he might know the resurrection power. Why, he already has that power. We have that power. Might we know the resurrection power in church today? Knowing God is more important than wisdom, strength or riches. Think about the people who are most admired in this world. They admire for those these three qualities, aren't they? We tend to admire those who are bright, intelligent and knowledgeable. Or those who are physically gifted in strength, talent, beauty or have assumed great wealth. The world admires that. Well, I'm not any of them. They may add. I've got none of them qualities. I know I haven't. Well, the Lord does not measure those as great importance. Listen to this. This is what he mentioned, say through Jeremiah. But none of those are of great importance. What matters more than anything else is understanding and knowing the Lord. Most important thing. Paul knows that to carry out his mission, he needs that power in his own life. He wants to daily experience that power that can take a person who has been crucified with Christ and make him a tool in the hands of the Almighty God. He wants to be a weapon and make him a tool in the hands of the Almighty God. He wants to be a weapon that can utter the word, powerful word of God and break through the darkness and set the captives free for the glory of God. Yes. Don't we want that today? Yes. Don't we want that today? And it is knowing the Lord we understand this resurrection power. Powerful stuff, I think. Powerful stuff. A great man once said, you cannot have too much only confidence. You cannot be too sure. He that died for you is alive and is making intercession for sinners. Believe that firmly and realize it vividly and you will be filled with the rest of your heart and will be bold to testify in the name of the Lord. The timid by nature will become like a lion. I love that. The timid by nature will become like a lion. 
Like in witnessing when the resurrection had borne to them overwhelming evidence of the Redeemer's mission and power. That's power. That's resurrection power. Acts 1.8 says this. But you shall receive power. The power of the Holy Spirit. You will receive power. A. Z. Tozer, a man, a great man of the world. And he said this. If God were to take the Holy Spirit out of this world, much that we're doing in churches would go right on and nobody would know the difference. That's sad, isn't it? That is a sad statement. The Tozer said that ages ago. And that's true of today. It is true of today. If God were to take the only spirit of the world, much that we are doing in our churches would go right on and nobody would know the difference. Let me tell you this, again in bold. So I'm going to really tell you this. Let me tell you this. God has placed resurrection power in every believer. Yes. It's the truth. Robert Neighbour says, on the need for the Spirit, unless saints know their anointing, they are helpless as babies in doing the will of God. The will of God can only be made powerful through the Spirit of God. We need to know it. We need to know it. We need to know that we have that Spirit. We have that power. We need to know that. We need to believe it. We need to believe it. Romans 8, 11 says this, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will, always, will also give life to your mortal bodies through the Spirit that dwells in you. God's power working for us, exactly the same degree of power that raised Jesus from the dead. Before Jesus went to the cross, Jesus made this statement. It's an amazing statement. You'll find it in John 14, 12. And he said this. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do. And greater works than these will he will do, because I go to my Father. Greater works. Wow. Let me encourage you. I want to encourage you today. I, I hope you feel encouraged today by this, because this is encouraging. This grabbed me when I was writing it. Uh, I had tingles writing this, uh, perhaps because it was late at night, but I was, but we have that power, the resurrection power. We need to believe it, we need to conceive it, and we need to receive it, church. You know, there was an advert going on. Some of you young bees might not, um, you might not know about this advert, but I remember it. It was when the British Gas, I think, were, were selling off their, um, their gas. And um, on the advert, the actor would click his finger and a flame would appear. And uh, it would be a catchphrase with, we have the power. We have the power. Well, you don't have to click your finger. You don't have to click your finger and all that. But we do need to believe that we have the power. We do need to believe that we have the power. The resurrection power. This power enables people to speak with authority. Acts 4.22 says this, and with great power the apostles were giving witness to the resurrection of the Lord. We're giving witness. Spiritual power fills life with healing influences. You know, we even see it in Acts 19.11 where God is using Paul. We see him using Paul where God was performing extraordinary miracles with the hands of Paul. Do you notice that God was performing those miracles through Paul? Yeah? It is God through Paul. Yeah? And I believe we can miss out. And I believe Christians miss out on this. And I believe churches sometimes miss out. Because they, they continuously believe that lie. 
is a lie the accuser uses. And the lie is this. He says, you know, he says, God could never forgive you for what you have done. Think how terrible you are. We can say, but he will own in on that, on that lack of confidence. He will own in on, on perhaps saying, well, yeah, God's done all that, I know, but who are you? You don't deserve this, you don't deserve that, and so on and so on. The accuser will do that. But we can say this. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead because I am just I have been justified, having believed in Jesus. And we can say, I am righteous in God's eyes. We can say to that, I am righteous in God's eyes. That is the power of the resurrection. When the accuser tells us we're not good enough, when the accuser t- says, well, do you know what? Do you know what? Yeah, so-and-so can do it, but... Uh, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Jesus said, for it is written. For it is written. We need to point them back to the Word of God. He knows the Word of God, but we need to point it out that we know the Word of God as well. And this is why Paul was saying at the beginning, this is what Paul was saying about, about knowledge of God. Paul is saying, you need knowledge, yeah? We need knowledge. But I am righteous in God's eyes. Let me tell you this today. When Jesus died, God laid on him the iniquity of us all. The punishment that all of us deserved for all our sins. He laid that upon him. Had there been any lacking, anything lacking in Jesus' sacrifice, if the blood had been lacked the power to cancel the penalty for anybody's sin, God could not have raised him. God could not have raised him. That penalty, that sacrifice was for our sins. God could only raise him, yeah? If that sacrifice was good enough for us. I'd just like to wrap this up now. And uh, sorry if I got a little bit excited earlier, but it does excite me. The power of the resurrection that is in us really excites me. Really excites me. I feel, you know, we need to tap into that power more. We need to tap into that power more. Not rely on ourselves. Not rely on ourselves. You know, we've got a tendency to do that. Even at church, we have a tendency to do that. We need to tap into this power. The resurrection power, greatest accomplished, is conformed to the likeness of Christ. We are forgiven for our sins, enabled not to sin, appointed by as ambassadors, and perfected in love. Basically you say it, not that Christians don't sin, but what you're saying is, we have the ability, yeah, yeah, we are forgiven our sins and we are enabled not to sin. We have that ability. Appointed as ambassadors and perfected in his love. Paul says, being transformed into his likeness with every increasing glory which comes from the Lord and guess what? Who is the Spirit? Yeah? Into his likeness. Can you imagine what that means? Think of everything about yourself that you don't like, all your habits. And I've got a few habits, Dr. Kathy could tell you a few. But all those, yeah? Think of things you don't like about yourself. All the negative characteristics, the things you wanted to change and tried to change. Well, let me tell you, God will deal with every one of those. He can deal with every one of those. He can do that. You are being made into a perfect creation. Not me yet. Yeah. I don't claim to be a perfect creation. And perhaps 
Christ, we'll never get to perfection. But it doesn't stop us from trying. It really doesn't. Yeah? God will deal with that. I don't want you to feel about, I don't want us to feel imperfect here, because we're not. In God's eyes, we're all perfect. He loves us all. Yeah? The things you wanted to change and have tried to change, God will deal with every one of those. You are made, you are being made into a perfect creation. It's about becoming like Jesus. That is our destiny. Christians perfect becoming the perfect bride of Christ. Spotless, blameless, loving, kind, strong, transformed into his likeness. And that comes from the power of the resurrection. Here's a question for us today. A question for us today. I'm not going to go on any further. I could go on further. I've only scratched the surface on this, by the way. You know, there's loads of material about this. And when you look into it, you, you can get really deep down into it. But, but, are you living the resurrection power? Are we living the resurrection power, church? This is life abundantly. Amen?